Uh, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Bird Flock Podcast. As you can see, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, we got a new guest today, a guy that has not joined us yet. Uh, starting corner for the Montreal Alouettes, uh, 2023 Grey Cup champ, Kavion Ento. Kavion, obviously, thank you for joining us. No problem, no problem. Happy to be here. Uh, we're just going to jump, obviously, right into it. Um, kind of a thing we do with our new guests. Uh, we give we give them a chance to take the floor and, and kind of tell us your story of how you know football got started and how you got to Montreal. Um, well, I mean, I've been playing, of course, since I was little, probably just like, <laughs> excuse me, probably <laughs> just like everybody else. Um, Palm Bluff, Arkansas, born and raised. Um, I mean, of course, had a you know good career in high school, but you know I wasn't ranked. End up going to junior college out of high school. And on my last, on my last junior college uh football game, my sophomore year, uh Colorado came to see me play. And they offered me, end up going to Colorado. Not playing as much as people think, you know, everybody, if you looked up my stats from Colorado, they're not gonna wow you at all. But uh play a lot of special teams. Uh I enjoyed my time. You know, try to do the best in my role. End up playing in the gridiron, uh, college gridiron showcase. That's in Texas. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's in like Fort Worth or Dallas. Did pretty good in that. That's a little small showcase game. Then I did good on my pro day. You know, of course, jumped high. And then end up going to Green Bay and being in Green Bay for three years. Uh, practice squad for two. I was definitely, I was hurt on one. And I think that's the active year that they count. And then I got released in 2022 from Green Bay, you know, set up and was waiting on a call. And so I didn't play in 2022. Uh, but the Owls wanted me to. But, you know, I'm sitting up hoping, hey. And I, I waited. I didn't know at that time how long the CFL season was. So by the time I was responding, like, hey, yeah, 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 I can play. Mm -hmm. In November, in November, the season was over. <laughs> and so I signed with the Owls um, in 2023 in January. And so, I mean, and, and from there, you know, you know the rest. Yeah, for sure. Something that you kind of left out that I honestly only found out today when I was preparing for this, and I'm sure a lot of people don't even know. You were actually a receiver in uh, <laughs> in college and in high school. Uh, so I guess my question would just be like, how was the switch? Like, how did that come up that you were switching to, to corner or DB and, and how has it been going? Um, so, which I can, um, I can backtrack all the way to the beginning. I mean, in high school, I played receiver in college. We, I played for, you know, smaller high school in Arkansas. So, you know, playing both ways was normal, you know, kind of where we were from. If you didn't play both ways and we looked at you like, you know, what's wrong with you? But, um... I ended up going to junior college, and my junior college coach asked me, he was like, hey, what position do you want to play? At, you know, at that time, I wasn't thinking necessarily about my future. I was just thinking I want to get on the field. So I'm, hey, whatever you want me to play. And he said, well, we really need you a wide receiver. And I, I'm like, can I play corner a little bit too? And, <laughs> and that didn't, I mean, I never played, ended up playing corner there, but I played receiver in junior college, and that's kind of where it started. Ended up going to Colorado. Uh, like I said, I didn't play as much. So, um, but I did, I think the film for me doing special teams, uh, being a jammer on punt return, you know, I threw a couple people I have, you know, threw a couple people out of bounds. I did pretty good at that. <laughs> uh, and I think that's a little film that, you know, I think scouts see. And kind of after, Football was over with in Colorado uh, when I, you know, when our season was over with. Uh, we have an academic coordinator. Her name was Miss Katie at that time. But, you know, they they talked to everybody. And I was sitting in her office. She was like, hey, some of the scouts are talking about asking, are you, you know, willing to twist position? You know, you're, you have the size for it. You know, the size that everybody wants. You know, you're 6'1", 6'2". And so, you know, is that something that you're looking into? And I, I told her personally, I'm like, I'll do whatever. It don't matter if they want me to become a long snapper. I'll do whatever to, to play football forever. And so that's really where it started. And when I went to the Gridiron Showcase, um, I played receiver there. And one of the scouts was like, 
man, we really wish we could see you at corner. I can say it now, but at that point in time, I'm like, I'm not getting that corner and and getting out. And I, y'all not gonna write me off on the first day here. I haven't even did one. <laughs> I haven't did a DB drill in so long. But during my pro day training, uh, I trained for receiver. I did my receiver drills and I also did some DB drills. Um, and they put me through the DB drills at the pro at my pro day. And after it was all said and done, um, kind of on draft day, my phone would start ringing. I got a call from one team. They wanted me to play receiver. But by that time, since I wasn't – I think since I wasn't getting the ball a lot, like, in college, uh, you know, I just – I can admit I just guess one of the one – wasn't the, one of those guys who was getting the ball. Um, I said to myself, it might be time for a change. Uh, if, if they're looking for guys my size, why not? You know, sometimes you can't find a wide receiver a dime a dozen. And, you know, DB is a little – harder to play so I was like why not and I knew I was turning into a DB at Green Bay like it wasn't like I got there and they was like you want to play receiver or DB um but like I said I got a call uh to play receiver and I signed Green Bay like real shortly after they called like I, I knew I wanted to play DB whoever was gonna give me the chance to play DB that's who I was probably gonna go to if if I had the actual opportunity and so I switched to DB Ricky Minicamp in Green Bay. And luckily it's been working out for me since. Yeah, it's definitely working out for you, man. You came out here and now you made your name uh, big time out here in, in Canada. But I want to start last year, going back to last year. Obviously you said you signed in Montreal in January. Started on the practice squad and then got a, got a great cup start. Started a bunch of games in there. Uh, even have a play named after you. I'm sure you've heard about that one. But uh, the Entoception. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, what was that journey like? Obviously, switching, um, you know, not having played the Canadian game before, uh, still relatively new position. What was that uh, transformation kind of like? Um, it was kind of, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, it's football, but they, it is true. And, you know, you come to Canada and the game is totally different, you know, starting with the field. That's the that's the biggest thing for a DB. I'm, you know, how much field can you cover when you get up here? It's a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. And so um, understanding just the 12th man, the waggle, things that I'm still understanding right now, how, you know, just the rules of the game, trying to make sure I know, you know, each rule because that's that's very important. Um, it's a lot. It's it's a lot to to take in. But I think I did okay. I still have a lot of learning to do. Um, I was playing mostly boundary corner when I first started and then, you know, had a rough patch and then I ended up getting moved to field corner and I guess I'm kind of sticking right there right now. Um, but it's different. That waggle, seeing it, especially when you be out there in a the game for the first time and, you know, you got a elite receiver off on, on the scouting report running towards you. You might have a, a tight end running at you out there. It don't matter. You see somebody waggling and you like, <laughs> you're just looking like oh my god like why is he starting from so far back and so just understanding that it's it's a lot in in, in nfl in, in college and just in the u.s you don't have to worry about motion and here everybody on the offense can motion so they it's a lot of eye candy as you know as i call it but in the end you gotta just find a way to know your defense and Take your time, understanding that they got three downs. They can only do so much. And so once I start understanding football a little bit more, it, it became a little bit easier. Yeah, you're sl you're slowly starting to, to read it well and, and becoming a ball hawk. And and we're gonna talk about the interception now that that everyone's calling it. Some people called it, you know, a game saving play. Some people called it a game changing play. Um, but if you look at that play and, and you rewatch it. Uh, you actually came off your guy to make that that ball, and you got up there. Um, you know, some guys uh, in games like that kind of don't make plays like that because they're scared of, of making a mistake. But what was going through your head when you left your guy to go up and get that ball? Um, well, people in the, in uh, don't realize what happened to play before that. The play before that, I got fussed at by, you know, my guy Reggie Stubblefield um, about – just you know doing I was kind of doing my own thing and and I'm pretty sure they saw something in the booth and was like 
hey, this was open. We'll come back to it. And being kind of in, in just kind of being in the right place, even, you know, I was on my guy, but kind of being in, in the vicinity. Luckily, we were in the red zone, so, you know, it's, the field is a lot shorter. But uh, I think when I saw, like, Coleros roll out and he pumped it, and I mean, I saw a lot. I was on my, re I was on the receiver. I saw a flat wrap coming, and I did see uh, Lawler at the corner of my eye. I saw him quickly, but I didn't realize that he really had ran a corner and that he kind of ran it right behind me. Mm -hmm. But when Caleros pumped it, I was like, "Well, you know, where are you going with this ball?" <laughs> and honestly, just when he threw it. I just could judge the ball that I knew I could go get it. So, it, I mean, that's really what it was. When he threw the ball, I just could see that, hey, this is a play that I can make. And I didn't know how close, actually, how close Lawler was behind me. Because if he would have known I was there and I would have known he was there, I guarantee you with, uh, both of us would have jumped a little bit higher and a little bit somewhere. <laughs> yeah, going go to another ball that, that seemed like lasted up in, uh, in the air forever. Everyone kind of says, you know, that ball on third down, obviously you got a great view of it uh, with the offense on the field, but um, that ball on third down, on, I think it was third down to Cole Speaker that uh, Cody threw uh, kind of on the last drive, the play before Tyson scored. Everyone says that ball was in the air forever. Did it feel like that for you also when you're sitting on the sidelines with the Grey Cup <laughs> in the offensive hands? It definitely did. It, it, it definitely did. It was um, when he dropped back, you know, it's I think it's what like third and five, third and six, somewhere around there. And yeah. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, where is he gonna go with the ball? Uh, you know, Winnipeg has a great defense, and they definitely had one last year. And it's like, after watching him scramble on the second and forever, yeah. you know, I'm I'm saying I'm saying to myself, Cody, you might have to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> but when he threw it, um, and I saw. Cole, like I, I'm looking at the ball, and I glance at Cole. I'm like, oh, he's actually in front of him. But when he jumped up for it, I'm like, you know, this this is gonna be a, you know, it's gonna be a tough catch. And for him to have the comfort concentration, uh, really to go through a pi, you know, I don't know why it wasn't called, but <laughs> to catch to catch the ball, um, in a situation like that, I mean, that was a big time play, and I tried to not overreact of course on that play but I was happy that hey we're in field goal range and I'm saying to myself hey defense we're gonna have to go back out here and possibly you know stop them make sure they don't get a field goal to kind of win the game but I knew we were in field goal range so I was like all right we got to get ready we got to be ready and you know after that next play he throw the bang route to Tyson and everybody was celebrating, and I think I was on the sideline running around, like, "Hey, hey, everybody, lock in! Hey, kick off! We got to... it!" Yeah. I knew that we probably had like 15 seconds left, but I just wanted to make sure that them 15 seconds was finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then once they did finish, clock hits triple zeros. What's the first thing going through your head? Um, first thing going through my head is, of course, um, I'll praise to God. Um just for the journey because there's a lot of things that happen in that season that you just can't script like you can't even make a perfect movie um and that's you know small things of the signings that we had of like Lemon and saint and people don't remember that you know reggie stubblefield got cut um and first year austin mack uh i don't know how uh, first year sneed like yeah. it's it's so many things lech at the at the end of the year like turning into this return guru it's it's so many things that happened in that year i mean you know starting when i got when i got there they ranked us ninth yeah and i didn't know anything about the cfl i didn't know how uh, how other teams was i'm biased on any team that i'm on so i'm thinking hey we pretty good and we got a chance to win the championship i don't know what everybody else was thinking but for everything to happen to find out that Cody was possibly thinking about being done with football. <laughs> um, it was beautiful. Uh, like I said, I praise God. 
And most of all, I, was, I think I was happiest for my um, teammates from like Montreal and the Quebec region. Um, I talked to Mark kind of that week and he was like, you know, if we win, you might see me cry. I said, well, get ready, Mark, <laughs> get ready. And when he caught the punt at the end, uh, I saw a lineman running down. I was just trying to make sure I protected him. But when I was, when I was around him, I was like, hey, I said, Mark, this, you know, this is for you. Cause I know there's something that you dreamed of. It means a lot more to him, I know, than me. But to be able to do it for him, do it for some of the teammates who are from Canada, who are from the Quebec region, it means a lot to me to do that for them. Yeah, for sure. And and luckily a lot of those guys were brought back this year and and the core is relatively the same. So that sentiment when the the schedule came out and you guys realized the first two games were on the road and the first one was in Winnipeg. What was the feeling? What was the vibe in the locker room? What were you guys talking about? Uh, I think we were shocked. I think we were shocked that we were going away <laughs> on the first game. And you look at the schedule and you look at the next week, like, oh, my gosh, we're away on the first two games. So I think we were pretty shocked about it. Personally, me, unless it's a playoff game, I like playing away anyway. <laughs> um. I like that the CFL honestly did it. They put us and us in Winnipeg against each other, you know, a uh, great cut rematch at their house, I guess. It, it, but at their house, it was going to mean, I don't know, a little more. Uh, but we were shocked. I was definitely shocked. I was like, first two weeks of the season. And of course, we also know that we got to raise a banner. So I'm like, it's going to take us two months to raise, <laughs> to, to, to raise a banner. I'm trying to go ahead and get the banner game out the way, too. <laughs> um, but we just have to lock in. It didn't matter where we played, who we played, when we played. We just knew that we had to be ready, and we know we're going to get everybody's best every week. Um, and I don't know if people respect the championship that we won as much, but that's why we're back to, you know, defend again. Yeah, for sure. And it started off hot, obviously. But in that game, unfortunately, a guy that you've talked about, a lot um Reggie Stubblefield obviously out for the year you've talked about him a couple times how much obviously we know how much he means to the defense but seeing how you've talked about it, how much does he mean to you and I, I saw those those stories of you guys playing uh NCAA together so I know the bond is strong off the field so how much did it mean for you personally w when you guys lost him and then for the defensive side um it it it, it took a it was a lot because me personally, like we came in last year together and I was there when he got, you know, released. I was there when he was in preseason making every, you know, every play. And it just, you know, sometimes come to, comes to a game of numbers, but me and Rick, like I was just playing a game with him earlier. I'm probably going to be playing a game with him <laughs> <laughs> when I get off, when I get off this uh, podcast, but uh that's, you know, we have a close locker room, and that's one of the guys that I'm closest to. Uh, I respect the way he plays the game. I love the way he plays the game. He plays it kind of totally totally opposite to me. Uh, I'm usually kind of cool, calm, collected, you know, looking around. I don't say much. Him, he going to talk stuff. <laughs> he going to play fast. He going to hit you hard. He going to run around. He going to be everywhere. When we on the sideline, supposed to be making adjustments. He gonna be yelling, and it's not out of frustration. It's just the way he plays the game. And when you see somebody play it like he plays it at a high level, who backs it up, it's hard not to respect him. It's hard not to enjoy it. And I mean, I'm just happy he was. You know, he's on my team. I, I know he's hurt right now, but I'm happy he's on my team because he, you know, he probably had a chance to go somewhere else other than Montreal. So to get him back, we. I mean, it took everybody. We, you know. We don't win it without him. We don't win it without, without a lot of guys. Yeah, and another guy that's been missing uh, for a lot of the year in that DB room, uh, an all-star in the CFL, obviously Wesley Sutton. Uh, he's been guys. missing to, to start the year. Um, but he's coming back. Uh, I, I think he's coming off the sixth game soon, hopefully. Uh, so how excited are you guys to, to get him back? And, and how vocal uh, has he been around you guys uh, in the first six games? Uh, really excited to get Wes back. Person to me, he was the DB that stood out when I first got here. Um, 
in training camp last year, three days in a row, in one-on-ones, not team. In one-on-ones, he caught a pick. And I'm looking, at, I'm like, you know, well, this is a standard in the room. Like, he's yeah. a standard. And high-level player, very smart, great technique. Um, you know, like I said, we're close. So I feel like everybody's my, you know, my brother, my guy. Those, you know, those are my guys. But I'm, it's, I'm very excited to see him get back because I know what he is capable of. And when he's on the field, he communicates, you know, he communicates to me very well. And, you know, he's been around. So he's making sure that he knows what he's doing because, um, you know, we're starting making adjustments and that we all know what we're doing. He, he's just telling us what he sees and making sure that we all are playing at a high level. Yeah, and I'm sure there's there's other things in that DB room, but you and the Feast line on the outside have been absolutely fantastic to start this year. Uh, and a lot of teams uh, aren't liking to throw towards you guys. So, what is it about that D room that's DB room that's making it so special? Aside from like maybe that close bond that you, you're saying that you have off the field. I think nobody. It's it's one of the like best friendly competitions I've ever seen. Um, everybody wants to make a play. We understand how we're going to make those plays. We understand that we're going to have opportunities to make a lot of plays. And we understand that it takes working together. You know, it takes me working with Mark. I know Nafis is all the way on the other side, but it takes me working with, you know, understanding what he's doing over there, understanding the, the rush, like my, my guys up front. It, it takes all of us understanding each other. But in that secondary, it's just like, I can't let Feast, you know, everybody, you want to be the interception leader in the league. <laughs> and I mean, it has to start with being on your team. And once you got guys like Nafis, how he's playing right now, um, Mark, we got Wes coming back. Uh, Ruff right now is leading, I think, leading the room in picks with with back to back games. And so once you see plays like that happening, uh, for one, you enjoy seeing it. You enjoy seeing your guys catching picks and, you know, trying to take it to the house. But I don't know. It's, it's, it's just a friendly competition and nobody brags about it. Nobody complains, but it's always a, when I get my chance, you know, basically when I get my interception, I'm going to score. <laughs> That's really what it is. I think we, we trying to see who, who's the best returner. I, I think I got booted to the bottom after my Edmonton uh, return. I don't know why, but <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of great guys in in the, in the room um, who believe in themselves, who believe in the next guy, who believe in the guy beside them. And once you have that, the roof, I mean, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. This defense uh, last year, I don't know how much you read, uh, you know, in the media and everything, but this defense last year was was kind of a worry at the beginning of the year for for a lot of fans. And obviously, everything's gelled, and you guys are are one year. Uh, further away from your, in your development, but how has Noel Thorpe kind of gotten a bunch of guys that are young guys on track, and and how has he gotten you guys to gel so well so quickly? Um, well, when we're in meetings, I mean, for one, he's been allowing us to kind of just be ourselves. I think he also understands uh more and more each day the kind of guys that he has as far as personality, um, uh, skill. And he's kind of put that into, we all have to buy into, you know, to a scheme, to, you know, what his idea is of whatever he wants to run. And we're all buying into that. Um, but he's doing a great job at making sure that we all just kind of know what we're doing. If we know what we're doing, that's that's kind of our biggest focus, knowing what, who we are, what we do. And when we do that, good things happen. So. That's a lot of credit to him. I know it's probably been an adjustment with a lot of really young guys, especially last year. Mm -hmm. And just think, you know, I don't even know how many games I'm in to the CFL, but I'm still considered a, you know, a new player into this league. And for us to have a young core is at playing at the level that we have, he's doing a great job. Yeah, the sky's the limit for sure. And and me and Dawson, we always joke about it on our episodes and. It seems that every time Noel Thorpe plays a team once, he has them figured out for game two. So we always joke that he's he's a, a film guru. Is he a film guru or like what happens in, in the second time you play teams? He just locks them up completely. How does that keep happening? 
Uh, I mean, for one, it's, it's it's hard to beat a team twice. And, you you know, you – I don't know, coaches, offensive coaches want to show their whole hand or not in the first game. Of course, you you know, you're just trying to do what you can to win. But I, I think he does figure it out because in the middle of the game sometimes you can see it. You can see it. Hey, this team might have had three good drives coming out um, in the first quarter. And then in the second quarter, for the rest of the game, they don't do anything. So I think he makes adjustments. Like when we get in at halftime, he keeps it real simple. And I think that's what it is. We are, we're, we're learning his system. We're learning, you know, how he wants things played. And once you do that, once you make it simple, we can move fast. Right? Cause I, I know it's on film that we play fast, we play tough and things. We have a lot of moving parts. So <laughs> trust me, day in, day out, everybody's studying the playbook, everybody doing what they're supposed to do to, to make sure that we can uh, function as a unit. But when he comes to make an adjustment, we say he, you know, he's the, he has eyes in the sky in the, in the press box and everything. But when they make those adjustments, it's, it's our job to, to make sure that, you know, we're doing right. Yeah, and I just got one more question for you here. Um, you know, you're, you're six games in, there's still another 12. So what should we be as fans expecting, not only from the defense, but from the rest of the team for the rest of the way? Uh, as far as from the defense, we are trying to look to score some touchdowns. <laughs> we are, I know everybody thinks we're out there just trying to get stops and get the ball back to the offense. Of course, that's, you know, the, the main goal. For us, we don't want points scored. Uh, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown. So um, defense has been – we don't feel like we played to our standard. We we feel like we played okay at times. But we know what we are capable of. And so as far as defense, we, we're we going to continue to, like I said, make those adjustments, come together even more, and make sure that – our technique, our effort, every everything is aligned. Everything is, is is top tier. But we're looking to score. We haven't scored yet, and <laughs> Coach Thorpe actually gets mad about that. Like he gets mad that that we had a ball in our hands and, and, and that we don't score. So we're looking to score. Uh, but as far as the team is, continue to just don't blink. Make sure that we continue to work on the work days and on game day that we know it's going to take three phases because, I mean, we have had games where we scored a defensive touchdown, a special team touchdown, and the offense is putting up points. And so we're just going to make sure that we continue to play team ball. Like when we're on that sideline and the game is going on, you don't you don't see people – a lot of people frustrated. Uh, Bell said it kind of one of the best ways. We know we're going to win. We just don't know how. And that's that's the mentality that – I've kind of been playing with. Uh, if you you know, we're not playing to compete. We're playing to win. And all the guys in the locker room feel the same way. I mean, we know we've had some injuries, but luckily we've had a lot of guys play. We've had a lot of guys play last year. Um, we are missing some key guys, but they're doing their part on getting back, and they're doing their part on making sure that we, you know, we, we know what we're doing. They telling us what they see, what they would and wouldn't see on the field, what they would and wouldn't do. We just gonna make sure that we stay together. That's 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 the number one thing. People people want to know we gonna we just gonna make sure that we stay together and then we're gonna play out of the way football. Man, I'm excited to watch the rest of the year. Uh, I know you guys are gonna come out. You come out swinging every game, and uh, that's all we could ask for as fans. So, KB on, obviously, thank you for joining us. You got a spot on here with us anytime you want to hop on with us. Uh, and good luck the rest of the way, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate what y'all do, um, you know, to the fans watching. Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate y'all. And I will say, um, I know it probably who, – who did we just play? Toronto. Toronto. I know the game before when, when we sold out 20,000 and, and the stadium was rocking and y'all making them – the center snap the ball and they came here. Like, it, it really – it really plays a big part for us. So, you know, y'all come out bring out the horns. Dun, dun. I, I love hearing <laughs> I, I love hearing that. Um I love hearing all of it. And and when we have a packed house and everybody's up on their feet yelling, screaming, trust me, it makes it tough for for uh, opposing offenses. So we're gonna help us. I want y'all to help I want y'all to help us. <laughs> and we just gonna continue to do our part. Yeah man, you keep you keep that gameplay up and, and you know the fans will show up. But uh 
You know what? Thank you again. And uh, like I said, anytime you want to hop on, you got a spot on here with us, man. Appreciate it.